We've been working on a cherry dresser with traditional raised panel sides, and I posted a photo of the large panels on our Instagram. By the way, if you want to see more about what goes on behind the scenes here, including projects that we make that may take months or maybe even not make our videos at all, then follow our Stumpy Nubs Instagram page. I try to post there several times a week. Anyway, someone asked if these raised panels would be structural or if they're just a cosmetic feature that will be attached to the sides of the dresser, as you might on the end of a row of kitchen cabinets. Of course, they are structural. They'll be the sides of the dresser, just as a solid panel or a piece of veneered plywood might be. Frame and panel construction isn't just for doors. And in this video, I'll explain when and why you may want to use a frame and panel rather than a solid piece on your project. One of the main benefits of frame and panel construction is it allows for wood movement. Solid wood will swell and contract with changes in the humidity around it. This always happens across the grain. A board may not become shorter or longer, but it may become wider or narrower. And the wider a board is to begin with, the more this wood movement will be a factor. A wide solid panel, such as may be the side of a dresser or a blanket chest, might change in width by an eighth of an inch or even more. Now that's enough to split the panel in half if you try to restrict that movement by attaching a panel with, say, horizontal grain to one with grain running in the opposite direction. So when building a box or a chest with solid wood panels, you must be sure that the grain all runs together. The four sides of this blanket chest are all oriented so the grain runs parallel to the floor all the way around. When these boards shrink or swell, the chest may grow a little taller or become a little shorter, but it will all move together and you won't have any issues with cracking or splitting. What if, for one reason or another though, you built something where the grain on the sides must run vertically while the grain on the front and back panels must run horizontally? Well, connecting those boards directly together would be a bad idea. The chest is likely to tear itself apart over time. However, if you put all four of your panels inside frames, then you could connect them in any orientation you like because the panels will float freely inside the frames, their edges being inside oversized grooves that give the panel room to shrink and grow independently of the other ones. Wait a minute, you say. Doesn't it look better when the grain flows all the way around a chest in the same direction? So why cross the grain at all? Well, perhaps that's because you're making best use of the materials you have. Maybe you're going to be painting it, so you're not going to see the grain direction anyway. Or maybe you wish to use highly figured wood, like burls and crotch grain that can go in all sorts of directions and move in unpredictable ways. Frame and panel construction allows all of your panels to move independently of each other regardless of grain direction. Now let's go back to our cherry dresser. Here we could have used solid slab panels because cherry isn't highly figured. But this design called for wooden drawer slides inside. Now if I attach strips of wood to make drawer slides and I put that right against the wide panel across the grain, well natural movement would be restricted and the panel may split. But by putting those panels inside frames, I can attach the ends of my slides to the frame only and leave the panel in the center free to move. Here's another example in a recent project we did. We built a bunch of furniture for the office here at the shop from some nice white oak. Rather than making all the panels for the desks and the cabinets from full three quarter inch thick oak, we resawed the boards thinner. This doubled our usable material but it left us with quarter inch panels that wouldn't really be very strong if connected together on their own. But by putting those thin panels inside sturdy frames, our cabinets and other pieces of furniture will be much more structurally strong. In this case, frame and panel construction saved us a lot of wood. Maybe that's not a big factor with common white oak, but what about highly figured wood like I mentioned before? You might make your valuable wood go twice or even further if you use frame and panel construction. Some highly figured materials may only be had in small pieces. You may only have maybe one square foot of crotch grain and you need a panel that's four square feet. 
Well, you could saw that into thinner pieces, book match it together, and now your one square foot of wood has become a four square foot panel, which is not only made stronger if you put it inside a frame, but it is also more attractive. Now returning to that office furniture, imagine how heavy it would be if it were all made from solid slabs of three quarter inch thick white oak. Frame and panel construction, on the other hand, is much more lightweight because only the skeleton is a full thickness. Our panels in that case were only a quarter inch thick. Of course, lightweight construction isn't always important. And with modern plywoods that aren't affected by the humidity changes and movement we've been talking about, and which may be covered with ultra thin, highly figured veneers, is frame and panel construction then becoming obsolete? Well, plywood must be edge banded and not everyone likes the look of edge banding. Putting a plywood panel inside a solid wood frame eliminates the need for edge banding and it produces a more traditional look. Frames with flat panels, such as we created for that office furniture, are a trademark of early 20th century craftsman design. Frames with raised panels, such as we're creating for the shaker cherry dresser, are common to many types of period furniture from the 19th century and earlier. You may not need a frame around your panel, but if you like traditional styles, you may want one. As you can see, there are a lot of reasons to use frame and panel construction for casework as well as cabinet doors. The only question is, what's right for your next project? See you next time. I've been a proud Tormek user for years. I've never seen so many clever innovations from just one small company, and the quality is simply uncompromising. Even if you're not in the market for a new sharpening system, you should check them out and see what they have to offer at the link below this video. There's a reason they're regarded as the best of the best. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.